it's time for math. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. It is good to be with you this morning. Today I'm wearing white because we have a very special day in the church. Uh, we're celebrating the feast of the three great archangels, Michael, Raphael, and Gabriel. So we're going to talk about them today and how important they are and the way that they help us understand their faith a little bit better. So let's begin. Let's first, like we always do, think about those times that uh, we have failed to do what's right and let's ask God for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you heal the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself to heal us and to give us strength. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us into everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who dispose in marvelous order ministries both angelic and human, graciously grant that our life on earth may be defended by those who watch over us as they minister perpetually to you in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever, and ever. A reading from the book of Revelation. War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels battled against the dragon. The dragon and its angels fought back, but they did not prevail. And there was no longer any place for them in heaven. The huge dragon, the ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world, was thrown down to earth, and its angels were thrown down with it. Then I heard a loud voice from heaven say, Now have salvation and power come, and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his anointed. For the accuser of our brothers is cast out, who accuses them before God day and night. They conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Love for life did not deter them from death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you will dwell with them and in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, Lord. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, Lord. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. 
I will worship you in your holy temple and give thanks to your name. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, Lord. All the kings of the earth shall give thanks to you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth, and they shall sing of the ways of the Lord. Great is the glory of the Lord. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and he said of him, here is a true child of Israel. There's no duplicity in him. Nathanael said to him, how do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than this. And he said to, uh, said to him, Amen, amen, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Saint Augustine is one of, uh, a great teacher of, of the things of the faith. And he teaches us that the word angel doesn't describe what angels are, but instead they describe what they do. So angels, angel. So they, what they do is they deliver messages from God, which means they can travel freely from heaven and earth. You know, in today's gospel, Jesus gives us that image of what that's like. Um, so Jesus says he's, he's like the ladder in Jacob's dream. And so Jesus is the link, like the ladder itself between heaven and earth. And then it's the angels who go up and down. And so they can travel really freely between the two places. So the church reminds us that the angels then are really Jesus' angels because they are messengers of the way that Jesus wants to, us to know of how he saves the world. And so the three archangels that we remember today, uh, we learn about them in the Bible and they give us messages, important messages uh, that remind us that God is absolutely taking care of us through Jesus. So we heard about Michael in that first reading and his name tells us everything. This is what it means. Who is like God? That's what Michael means. Who is like God? But St. Gregory, is, he's the one that points out that it's really a question. You know, who is like God? Because the answer is no one is like God. God is, God is, is God itself, and it's very different from, from us. 
Um, but Michael defends us from thinking that somehow God's not important, the church is not important, faith is not important, all those things that people try to tell us about. So, uh, because God definitely is important. And Michael gives us the message that we have someone we can turn to, especially when we feel scared about anything. You know, sometimes that happens. Sometimes we get scared on the inside. So if you ever feel afraid, you know, ask Michael to come and, and to defend you, and he will. Even though we can't see him, uh, he's there. He's, he's helping us through. Gabriel's name means God is my strength. So he's the one who came to Mary to help her understand that, that, Jesus, that God was inviting her to have Jesus, to give birth to Jesus, uh, that she was gonna be his mother. Um, but he also brings that important message, don't be afraid, do not be afraid. It's one of the, the, the most common things Jesus says in the whole Bible is do not be afraid. So when we need to feel stronger on the inside, you know, sometimes we can ask Gabriel also to come and help us. Raphael is the third archangel, and he's the one who came to be with a man named Tobit. We read about that in the Old Testament. And he was there when things got hard for him and got hard for his family. So the name, his name means God has healed. So that's what Raphael means, God has healed. Because of the way Tobit and his father received healing from God when they really needed it most, the healing on the inside. You know, so the message of Raphael is that God finds ways to heal us, too. You know, when we feel down or we feel bad on the inside about something we've done. So we just have to ask him and he'll come to help us. So there they are, the three archangels and three really important messages. God protects us, God strengthens us, and God helps us to heal. And when we need any of these three things, we have these saints that we can call on and they can help us understand it better. And then in the end, it reminds us of Jesus' own name. We call him Emmanuel, and that means God is with us. And that says everything. And so to that, we always say, Amen. Yes, it's true. And now, together, let's bring all of our prayers and our needs to God. For the church, that we will work for peace and find ways to end hate in our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those working to help with the solution to the spread of COVID-19, that they will be successful in their work. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the families who were affected by the wildfires and the hurricanes, that they will find the help they need to recover. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own families, that we will grow closer and find ways to help one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our teachers and our principal and all who help us every day at school and at home, that they will be blessed by all the good they are doing let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May all those who are sick, including those fighting COVID-19, find comfort and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those we love who have passed away, that they will see God face to face. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we know that you probably have things you would like to pray for too, things that are important to you, things that are in your heart and on your mind. And so we ask your teachers right now to pause and let's bring those prayers and needs to God. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Thank you, God, for all that you give us and all that you do for us. We always are grateful because we can turn to you in times of need. So please hear our prayers today. We ask them all through Jesus Christ, our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer you a sacrifice of praise, O Lord, humbly entreating that as the, these gifts are borne by the ministry of angels into your presence of your majesty, so you may receive them favorably and make them profitable for our salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, and to praise you without end in your angels and archangels. For the honor we pay the angelic creatures in whom you delight redounds to your own surpassing glory. And by their great dignity and splendor, you show how infinitely great you are to be exalted above all things through Christ our Lord. Through him, the multitude of angels extols your majesty, and we are united with them in exultant adoration, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, 
spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Blaise our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, as a family of faith, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having been nourished with heavenly bread, we beseech you humbly, O Lord, that drawing from it new strength under the faithful protection of your angels, we may advance boldly along the way of salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so it's so great to be together. Today we got to pray with the angels and the saints. And today as we remember Michael and Raphael and Gabriel, we know that we have these important messages that God gives us and they're there. We can pray to them too for the things that are happening in our life. So we can always turn to our archangels for help. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.